season. Two. Oh, it's another pack collection video. One pack about him and another pack collection video. It's time to walk down memory lane. I'll be explaining the sh jokes and shenanigans of I Lost My Season 2. Series where it's been a lot of fun to look like an idiot. The basic concept of I Bluff to lies at it. Um, I watch an episode of the Trolls series by DGR and then make predictions about it. And for each wrong prediction, I eat a bean. Well, what I'm doing for season three is I eat two beans because it helps get rid of my beans more quickly. Um, but anyway, a joker shenanigan is anything that makes the series more priceless, which encouraged me to make season two after I did season one. It could be anything like clever editing or maybe a little joke or something in the background. Anything that's irrelevant to the basic concept or anything significant I do with it that, you know, um... You can control some of my sh jokes and shenanigans by doing uh, my eye switches. Now, I have already made my own two, uh, at least two. I haven't made a third one yet, but I'm not sure if I will or not, but eye switches. And you can find it in the spreadsheet. You can use the Google form to make your own. You can see all of them in the spreadsheet. And I know my brother's made a couple of them. There's uh, one nonsensical one that it's just random random letters, gibberish. I'll just get rid of that one. And then there's one where he uses the pseudonym Dwight Kurt Schrute from the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. The Office. I mean, I think I'll keep it. It's a... Uh, Reference to something in the show. I don't know the show quite as well. Not as much as he does, so I'm not sure what he's talking about for that one. But it's a condition that it's not going to happen here. But it's okay. I'll just keep it in the the consequence of that. It's that's not going to happen. But it's a reference to the show, so I'll, I'll I'll just keep it because it's I mean not really inappropriate. But I'll get rid of that random probably get rid of that random nonsense one. I mean it's not really inappropriate. It's just too random, which is why I'll get rid of that one, but I'll show it. But anyway, how long have I wasted with the... Oh, by the way, I didn't read the intro this time, I just did it from memory, but changed slightly. Two and a half minutes, almost three minutes, okay. But first of all, I need to find, uh, where are we at? Season 2, episode 4, part 5. Oh, look at that. I found it. I found it. Infinite DVD unboxing video. Festival of the Spoken Nerd. Okay. Bryce 2 just came in and found it for me. So yeah, my idea is I have multiple Bryce's. That is Bryce 1. I am Bryce 2 helping me. So this Bryce will not worry about the bingo board at all. I had watched the Area of a Squirkle video by Stand Up Maths less than 21 hours before recording. There were multiple Mats talking to each other, which gave me the idea of having multiple Bryces talking to each other. In the Squirkle video, Main Matt, or Matt 1, gave Matt 2 the task of baking lemniscuit biscuits and doing the math with icing. I gave Bryce 2 the task of taking care of the bingo board so that Bryce 1 could focus entirely on watching the trolled episode, making predictions, and eating beans. In the video, I mentioned three stand-up math videos where there were multiple mats talking to each other. The Squirkle video, the Infinite DVD unboxing video that I couldn't remember the name of, and the Coriolis Effect video. Bryce 2 came in and found the Infinite DVD unboxing video. Bryce 2 wore a hat for a visual difference, and I changed Bryce 2's EQ for an auditory difference. Where did that come from? What are you doing? What are you doing now? Oh, where did that come from? I did not. <laughs> the Bryce 2 recording was with a different window that was the same size as the bingo board window in the Bryce 1 recording. The screen recorder, controls, and timer box was dragged by Bryce 1 seemingly out of nowhere, but the Bryce 2 recording was layered in front of where the box came from because that's where the bingo board window is. Uh, 
By the way, before I read the next one, I'll tell you that a few days ago I just skimmed through both uh, part five here and then part six, which is the next one. And I think I had seen many short ones here, but also a few long ones in the next one. So I it's not to get probably not get too long here, but there will be some doozies in the next one. Um, there are some backstories. But, oh yeah, I can do it. Right now it's time for dancing. There we go. Bryce 2 danced to the Mario Kart music that played in the Trolled episode. Bryce 1 did not. And also, as you may have seen, I also danced to it. Wah! 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 Bryce 1 cut off Dave's what? Then Bryce 2 mocked the what? After that, Bryce 2 reacted to Bryce 1 forgetting to focus the spreadsheet again. Note that the N key goes to the next video, and the text that Bryce 1 was typing into the spreadsheet started with N. Oh. You pressed the wrong keys, or, or he did not select the spreadsheet. By the way, that is not pronounced at as in the at in that. It is pronounced as in what. The video resumed from the middle of Dave's what, then Bryce 2 mocked the at. Bryce 2, keep them entertained. Bryce 2, yeah. keep what? them entertained while I'm gone. Okay. Um, uh, I should make a prediction what's behind the clown car. I didn't see what was behind the Do that later. Get the beans now. Oh, I'm going now. All right. So, can you make circles, one finger going forward, the other finger going backwards, like this? Not both forwards, not both backwards, but one forward, one backwards, like this. One forward, one backwards. Can you do that? That should keep you entertained until... Uh, I'm back. I have the beans now. Alright, good. Bryce 1 realized he didn't have his beans, so he went to get them. Before he went, he told Bryce 2, who stayed, to entertain the viewers while Bryce 1 was gone. Bryce 2 decided to do the finger trick where one moves forward while the other moves backward. Here is how I do it. Start with one finger in the front and the other in the back. Repeat the following. Move both up, cross their paths, move both down, and cross their paths. Just remember, up. Just remember, up, cross, down, cross. Cross, down, cross. And you can have one finger moving forward until the other was moving backward. Bryce 2 said, that should keep you entertained until, and timed it just right so that Bryce 1 returned just after. So it doesn't matter which one starts at the front, it doesn't matter if you start one up or down, but just remember like up, cross, down, cross, up, cross, down, cross. Just keep doing that, and that's how you can do it. I mean, I can do it both ways. So that down, cross, up, cross, down, cross, up. Or I guess you could have them cross in the front and back. Something like that. 
Just know that if we're going in opposite, opposite directions, there will be two points where they're like crossing each other. And then and they're opposite each other. And then perpendicular to that, they're moving the same direction, like both down and both up. Or, you know, if the crossings are above and below. First bad spin. Oh, what was that? What was that? That wasn't a good spin. Should I respin it? Yeah, respin it. I was pathetic. I mean, you're in the future. Yeah. So you would already know if I respin it or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It landed on butter popcorn or rotten egg. Well, kind of landed on it. Let me give it actually a good spin. You should make yourself bigger. Oh, I should make myself bigger? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There you go. Actually, I just remembered in that the meniscus or squirkle area video, okay. he wrote the lines. But right now, but Bryce one is improvising lines, and I'll try to remember. But maybe I'll make cues later. Yeah. For Bryce two to remind myself what Bryce Wynn said and so Bryce 2 will know what to say and when. Yeah. This is the first time I badly spun, or failed to spin, the spinner in this video. Both Bryce's noticed how bad it was. Second bad spin. Yeah. Uh, what was that? It's spin. It's not spinning. No, it wasn't, was it? It was not spinning. Was it? It's not spinning. It did not sound like a good spin. Okay. All right. There you go, finally. Coconut or spoil? This is the second time I badly spun, or failed to spin, the spinner in this video. Bryce 1 saw the glare and thought it was spinning despite the lack of sound. Bryce 2 noticed how bad it was, of course. Bryce 1 eventually figured out that it wasn't spinning. I'll come back, but because the recording will be paused and I'll just resume it, it'll be like no time for you at all. I didn't really eat lunch today, but I had a big supper, so I, that made up for it. Um, oh yeah, by the way, the next one is, the one reason why I made that up is because the next one is called, What Did You Eat For Lunch? And I need to visit, uh, what are, according to Michael Stevens, what, what are the kids calling it? The, the R room? I don't know. So what was my big supper that, that I had? Uh, I'll just tell you real quick. Longhorn Steakhouse, uh, a, few, a couple pieces of bread and butter, a mixed green salad with ranch, loaded baked potato, six ounce sirloin with A1, two servings of uh, raspberry lemonade, and some of my mother's free birthday dessert because her, her birthday is on the 13th of August and nearly there, three days after this recording. So that means I'm recording on the 10th. The dessert was a chocolate stampede cake with vanilla bean ice cream. Oh, by the way, yeah, I feel better after you know, leaving the yard room, but unlike Michael Stevens, I did wash my hands. <laughs> okay. What did you eat for lunch? I bet your lunch was tastier than that bean, right? Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, of course it was. Yeah. What did you eat for lunch? On that day, it was chili and cornbread. Oh, okay. That good chili and cornbread. Huh? That we made. Today I had big chicken and I fries. I remember uh, that's what I went to eat. Because if okay. I eat 
Now, how would you know? You hadn't made the Bryce 2 recording yet. Right? So how would you know? You're right. Technically, I don't know what Bryce 2 said because I haven't recorded Bryce 2 yet and I haven't eaten lunch yet. Right. Bryce 1 thought that I would get the Bryce 2 recording done after lunch on the same day. It turned out I did it the next day. Bryce 1 didn't know what Bryce 2 ate for lunch, but of course it would taste better than the spoiled milk bean. Bryce 2 also said what he ate for lunch the next day. Bryce 1 would have remembered what Bryce 2 ate for lunch, but I hadn't made the Bryce 2 recording yet. So whatever I were to eat for lunch, that would influence Bryce 2's answer. The first lunch was chili and cornbread, and the second lunch was big chicken and french fries, which means I got food from the well-known fast food chain McDonald's on that second day. Hi, we're going from 11.53 to 13.53. The seconds are the same. Specs. No colored specs. There was no color. If there were no colored specs in it, it is coconut or spoiled milk, which is, you know, what I hate. Specs. This one has some colored specks in it. Okay. Bryce One was talking about the difference between coconut or spoiled milk and birthday cake or dirty dish water. One time, Bryce One accidentally said specs instead of specs. So Bryce Two pointed to Bryce Two's glasses, which are also called spectacles, which is commonly shortened to specs. Bryce 2 repeated the joke because Bryce 2 was unsure you could hear it the first time because Bryce 1 was talking specifically about the difference between coconut or spoiled milk and brisket cake or dirty dish water. Quit laughing at me! I'd been forgetting to look at the bingo board. I've been waiting in for the cues and stuff. In. Oh, you didn't type that in the correct box. <laughs> Quit laughing at me. Quit laughing at me. How did he know I was going to do that? Bryce 1 correctly typed the timestamp into its column, but then accidentally started to type the prediction after it in the same cell. Bryce 2 laughed at it. Bryce 1 told Bryce 2 to quit laughing, but that confused Bryce 2. I recorded Bryce 1 first, so Bryce 1 shouldn't know anything that Bryce 2 would do, including laughing at this mistake. So, how did Bryce 1 know? Well, I planned this entire joke while recording Bryce 1, including having Bryce 2 pretending to be confused. Show me the ropes! Back in business, but he forgot the ropes. <laughs> We're safe here. Yes. Yeah. Bryce 2. What, what what does the ropes or show me the ropes? What does that mean? I defer this uh, uh whatever to you. You find it. Yes. yes. Now. Now, 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 now. Now, 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 now. Yes. 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 No. Yes! Yes! <laughs> is that 50 back bait or is it not bait? I mean, is it. Um, we'll find out, right? Sailing turn. It's a nautical term, just like brace of shakes. Okay, here we go. How much you want to bet if we grab... Dave had said, Uncle Big Brain is back in business, baby. But then he died to a troll. Not too much of a surprise. Bryce One made the joke that Uncle Big Brain forgot the ropes. Bryce 1 told Bryce 2 to search what show me the ropes means because I didn't know. I found it was a nautical term, like Brace of Shakes, which is the title of one of my brace acts, which editor me played a part of. 
Oh, I need to go exact exactly one minute later than what I stopped at. So from 21.45 to 22.45. That's not what he meant. Bryce One's audio is not aligned with the video. <laughs> so it's hard to find out if the timing of my responses are... Where am I? Correct. Pennsylvania, right? <laughs> That's not what he meant. <laughs> the audio of Bryce 1 got misaligned with the video when Bryce 2 opened a new tab to search for Show Me the Ropes. Dave asked, where am I? Again, like he did in the previous episode. Bryce 1 made that Pennsylvania joke again like I did in the previous episode. Bryce 2 said that's not what he meant because Dave meant he didn't know which part of the course he was in. 1945. 1945. 1945. Was that a good year? I don't know. Ooh, end of World War II. Yeah, that's a good year. Okay. At Ernie, so I'm nine. My character would know that, but I'm not history buff. I'm not good with dates. Is or was or will be one of the bingo spaces. The timestamp of this prediction was 1945, which sounded like a year to Bryce 1. Since I don't know very much about history, I asked Bryce 2 to find out if that was a good year. Bryce 2 found out that it was a good year because that is when World War II ended. Ernie Swim 9 is a character I created for whenever I parody Eric Surf 6, or when I make a big scripted video or series that has many characters. Maybe not every time. Not all of my ideas. I plan to have my alphabetical film genres, which is similar to, you know, Andrew Huang, Born a Band's 26 genre songs. I want to do that idea, but for a short film, I want to have, like, one linear plot that goes through the different genres, not, like, 26 separate plots, but one plot that goes through the different genres. And I plan to have like completely different characters than in Jury Room, Skits on the Fritz, and Skits on the Fritz 2 Control Freaks. But we'll see what I do with that. Um, I refuse to comment on my dates joke. Real of fortune. Real? Uh, fortune. Now. Remember you had Pat Say Jack on the screen? Oh. Previous part? What? Yeah. yeah. Well, I also showed a bunch of other Pats. Why? Because Riot was patting my head, so. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Dave read the word real on the screen. That reminded Bryce 1 of wheel, which reminded him of Wheel of Fortune. That prompted Bryce 2 to remember that I had an image of Pat Sajak, the host of Wheel of Fortune. Well, not anymore. Ryan Seacrest is now the host, and you can see Ryan Seacrest in the next season. Uh, on the screen in the previous video. Bryce 1 recalled that there were other pats on the screen as well, because Ryan was patting my head. One of the bird clocks chirped, but which one? You can see Bryce 2 pointing to the bird clock, so it was the bird clock in the Bryce 2 recording that was chirping. Mimicking the music. Off key, right? Alright. Seems like that's an... Bryce 2 mimicked a part of the Gusty Garden Galaxy music that was playing in the troll course in the trolled 
video in the Bryce 1 recording. Then, Bryce 2 mimicked a part of the Slider music that played after the Gusty Garden Galaxy music. Bryce 1 paused the video and Bryce 2 noticed that he was off key. Future me. The future me. The future me. Do you have a camera? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, yeah. put your camera below mine. Okay. I mean, it's the same camera. Yeah. Of course it is. Let's pass. How did it skip forward one second after I paused? I paused there at a 27.33. But then it went forward when after that to 2734. Yeah. Of course it is. Okay, cooperated that time. Okay. This part is inspired by the end of the area of a Squirkle video. Matt 1 and Matt 2 were sitting beside each other eating lemniscuit biscuits and having a two way conversation. A list of Stand Up Math's Patreon supporters was scrolling between them as if it was covering up a seam. They asked Future Matt, which is the Matt that is editing the video, to turn on his camera and they included him in the conversation. Similarly, Bryce 2, which finished the outro for Bryce 1 and continued recording after Bryce 1 finished recording, asked Future Me, also known as Editor Me, to turn on his camera. Future Me didn't make a screen recording, just a face cam recording. Editor Me, just after Future Me, applied animations to the Future Me recording to move it according to where Future Me was looking. Pass the hat. Let's pass the hat. Okay. That would be a cool trick. Okay, pass going down. Can you reach up? Grab the hat. Put yeah. the hat on. Okay. Yeah. By the power of magic, I've duplicated the hat. Oh. <laughs> so we both get one. Yeah. But not Bryce one though. Um. Yeah. I tried to make it look like Bryce two passed the hat down to future me. This is somewhat similar to Matt two giving a lemniscuit biscuit to future Matt. But they didn't pass the lemniscuit biscuit through Matt's face cam. Matt too put a lemniscuit biscuit into a rucksack, and future Matt still had that rucksack with the lemniscuit biscuit in it. Made cuts in. There, there were two instances where I cut off. I think it has something to do with opening a new tab in Chrome, which caused the audio glitch, like uh, something to do with the different processes, I'm not sure. There were multiple processes running. There was Chrome, there was me playing in Filmora, the, like the video preview in Filmora, you know, after the bar was going along the timeline. Yeah, and I had Bryce 1 in my text cues in there. So yeah, that, Chrome, and the screen recorder, recording part of the screen. Future Bryce said he cut off Bryce 2, but that's not quite right. Editor B clarified with text on the screen that said, made cuts in the Bryce 2 recording, and said why with the rest of the text saying, to fix the delay issue. The asterisk at the beginning of the text shows that it is a correction or clarification to what Future Bryce was saying. Do I want to do the next part or not? You went a high, I would do it. And if Editor B thinks it takes too long, to so split it into two different videos. Part 6. Do you remember that good chili? Do you remember that good chili? Well, yesterday, on Labor Day, it's kind of a tradition, I guess. My father grilled uh, burgers and hot dogs, and my mother had a good idea of taking some of that good chili, chopping it up, 
here, like in a grinder, to make it smoother. And I had a chili cheeseburger yesterday, and I had a chili cheese dog today. Stay tuned to the very end of the video to see my chili cheese dog. And what is chili primarily made out of? Ground beef, tomato sauce, beans. Yes, beans. I will go get my bean boozle beans. In the previous video, namely the Bryce 2 video, specifically at 11.53, Bryce 1 asked Bryce 2 what he ate for lunch, and Bryce 2 said that he ate that good chili and cornbread that I made. For clarification, I made the cornbread, and my father made the chili, possibly with my help, but I don't remember. In this video, I described and explained what I did with it the day before and that day, namely ate a chili cheeseburger the day before and a chili cheese dog that day. Why did I have a chili cheese dog that day when I had a chili cheeseburger the day before? That's because I thought of a good idea for the after black thing, which I told the viewers to stay tuned for. I transitioned that to me going to get my beans because beans are a main ingredient in chili, though they are different types of beans, of course. And also, as I've said before, the after black things, a libel off the lie, will be in their own videos. Probably two videos, one of them for season one, another for two, season two, and a third one for season three. Which has one more episode to be recorded. Editor me, keep them entertained. Editor me, keep them entertained while I'm gone. I just remember. I just remember. I just remembered some of the things Editor Me did here. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> I should stop stalling. Get on with it so you can see it too. I mean, if you've watched that I blocked on the video, you've already seen it. <laughs> no, you will not cut out when I'm gone. You will keep the part where I'm gone and put something anywhere on the screen. My name is Dave, and I have a butt problem. This is what we all needed. I have a butt problem. Really? Take it back. Beans! <laughs> okay, what the heck was all that? Well, that's what this explanation series is for, so let's get to it. <laughs> okay. Let's start reading it uh, now. In the previous video, Bryce 1 told Bryce 2 to keep the audience entertained while Bryce 1 went to get the beans. Similarly, in this video, I told Editor Me to keep the audience entertained while I went to get the beans. Editor Me knew that he could cut that part out, which Bryce 2 couldn't do, but I told Editor Me to not cut out any of it. For the rest of this explanation, I will refer to Editor Me in the first person. I tried to think of something funny, and then I thought of a little something. I said, get ready for this. I borrowed the clip of Madam Gasket that was used in the namesake video and mirrored it so she faced left. I borrowed the clip of Rodney Copperbottom that was used at the end of the same video. Finally, I inserted a bit of that one DGR screen I have used quite a few times. The final effect was that Madam Gasket scared Rodney and he screamed and jumped back. The real reason that Rodney jumped back and said, whoa, was because he saw Aunt Fanny's Fanny. American slang, not British slang. I said that was it, but I 
actually thought of something else funny to add because recorded me was not back yet. I borrowed the clip of Dave saying that he has a problem where he confuses pokies and wigglers and I put it over the Dave on the screen. I borrowed the clip of Dave saying, but, used several times at the end of the My Maturity video, and I put it over the entire troll video on the screen. I borrowed the clip of Dave saying, this is what we all needed, referring to the Super Ball music. I borrowed the clip of Superintendent Chalmers saying, really, from Steamed Hams, and bearded it, so he faced left. Finally, I borrowed the clip of Mr. C saying, Take it back, because what came before was absurd. The final effect was that Dave said he had a butt problem, then said that we all needed a butt problem, and Chalmers questioned that. Mr. C said to take it back, so I said that it was too late for to take it back. So, I guess that was the first long doozy of an explanation, but not the only one. There's going to be at least one more, maybe two. I don't know. Let me just stop rambling on and get to it. B E A N S. Beans. Beans. B E A N S. Beans. <laughs> It's a good thing I returned just then. Good Mythical Morning is a popular, long-running YouTube variety series hosted by Rhett and Link. One thing they have done a few times is called Smelling Bee. Rhett and Link take turns as host and smeller slash speller. There is a secret word of a smelly, stinky thing, and there are blanks on the board representing the letters of the word. There are the same number of jars with straws that the smeller speller can't see in, and he has to guess what s scented things are in the jars. The first letters of each scented thing spell the correct word, and correct guesses reveal their corresponding letters. Finally, the smeller speller has to spell the secret word just like in a spelling bee. He is allowed to ask for the origin of the smell, the secret word, or a sentence hinting at the secret word. If they are wrong, they get the smelly, stinky thing dumped on them. If they are correct, the host gets the smelly, stinky thing dumped on them. Do you want an example? Sure. Rhett is the host in this round, and Link is the smeller speller. There are four blanks and four jars. The first jar has grape soda, second has urine, third has tar, and the last has soy sauce. Put together, they spell guts. Link only correctly guessed soy sauce, so only the S was on the board. Link asked for the spell to be used in a sentence, so Rhett's clue was, Oh, that's private information. Don't spill your... this smell. Link being Link did not count the letters and thought of the phrase, Don't spill the beans. So, that wasn't right, so Link got guts dumped on him. Back to me. When I said... Beans, as I returned, I was reminded of this moment of smelling bee. I only included Link saying spelling, then saying beans. Fright Night Chili Dogs. Starting the video in a... In a before... It, have I done this before? Instead of playing tr the troll video first, in a particular iSeries video uh, or part of an episode. Okay, usually I do that first, but this time I'm actually making a prediction first before I start playing that in this video. So, before I even start, oh, I Six now, right? Yeah, just did. I did almost the exact same thing I did in the pipe of the pipe of the pipe video. This time, instead of dropping the octave at the second beat of the first measure at the half octave, layman's term for tritone, 
at the beginning of the fifth measure. Okay, I was kind of confused with this one. It seemed like I didn't finish the sentence, but I think I got it now. What I did before was that when I got to the tritone, or six, you know, half steps up. So, Fright Night Twist starts at B minor, so the tritone up would be F minor. What I did before, the F... The first... Measure the first bar when I got to the F. I um, at the second beat I dropped the octave so down to the F minor that's below. What I did this time was at the beginning of the fifth measure, I guess, of the F. Blurred. Okay. Yeah. This is so fun. I went to the file explorer to confirm that the current part I was recording was 4.6 so that I can correctly update the list of list of predictions. List, uh, list. I had the UCAM folder open, and I didn't know if I had anything in there that I didn't want you to see. So, editor me, but... For those of you who have a dirty mind, there is nothing dirty in that way. I just mean, like, it could be old videos I'm not willing to share. I mean, they're innocent, but... Maybe embarrassing. Or maybe it could be recordings for a future video I've not released yet. I'm not ready to share with you. Or maybe there's some private information. Nothing in atomical, so. Um, and I didn't know if it had anything in there that I didn't want you to see, so editor me blurred it. I don't think I found a good enough blur effect on its own for one layer, so I think I used multiple layers of it. I switched to the Wondershare Filmora output folder, which is where I put the finished I Beloved to Lie and other videos to confirm that the most recent one was 4.5 and this one is 4.6. Oh, by the way... That is where in this video I have pitch shifted Fright Night twist enough to be an F, and at that second beat I dropped the octave. From what I did it from what I did it earlier in the series. The pipe of the pipe of the pipe video, but here You can hear when the octave dropped, I guess that was the fifth measure into the F minor. Allowed to cut. If you don't want to cut that, you could blur it in case there is something in there I don't want them to see. Earlier in the video, I told editor me to not cut out the part where I was gone and to keep them entertained while I was gone. <laughs> editor me wasn't sure if recorded me permitted any cuts in the video, so I asked. Well, of course I knew because recorded me came first, but I pretended for the joke. I told editor me that he could blur it, which is how editor me knew to put the joke there. Bird clock twist.
The bird clock chirped again. There is a game called Conexo, which you can find it on Conexo.ws, and it's similar to uh, the New York Times Connections game or PuzzGrid.com, but this one has the most leniency. There is no timer, but PuzzGrid has a timer. And there is an unlimited number of guesses you can make where it's limited on connections. And also becomes limited when you have two categories remaining on Puzz Grid. The thing I want to point out, the first two words, bird clock. I, I highly doubt that uh, whoever created Conexo knows about I've lost a line that the bird clock chirps, so it's a coincidence. Bird clock! I've already done it. I, I do it on my phone. I usually play these games on my phone, so... Yeah. The bird clock chirped again. As usual, I pointed to it because it was in the background. This time, it was while Fright Night Twist was playing with the pitch shift that I have previously described. As I've said before, I don't physically point to the bird clock in my 3D space. I look at my face cam, point my finger up, and position it just below the bird clock relative to the 2D projection, which is how the 3D space appears on the 2D screen. How does the computer have enough storage to hold all of these long recordings I'm making and all of the other recor video recordings I've ever made? How, how is there enough storage? I mean, I'm a computer science major, I should know, right? But if I'm worried about running out of space, I should stop rambling and just get to it. How does the YouTube servers have enough storage to hold all of these... Uh, videos, like lots of, like thousands and thousands upon thousands of minutes, maybe even, it's maybe thousands of hours, I don't know, so much content being uploaded to YouTube, how does YouTube hold it all? A lot of long videos, even so many mid-duration videos that... Tenth Loud Warning! Real? I did it! I made it to 10 loud warnings between I Beloved to Lie and I Beloved to Lie Season 2! My microphone audio and the computer audio are both in the same file. The computer audio is louder than my microphone audio. Most of the time, I cut around the computer audio and make that quieter while my microphone audio has the volume cranked up. This time, I did not quiet the computer audio. That also happened in episode 1, part 1, because using Filmora's screen recorder, which captures the computer audio, for Abba Lost Lie was new for season 2. In 2020, I used the free version of Screencast-O-Matic, which does not capture the computer audio, so it came through the speakers into the microphone and was not as loud. Fortune Feimster. Real? Oh, fortune! No. Oh, fortune, I get it. I wonder if she's ever on... Uh, has she? I wonder if... She, oh, she would play on... Uh, play Celebrity Real of Fortune or not. I mean, kind of her name's in the name of the game. Dave read the word real on the screen. That reminded me of wheel, which reminded me of wheel of fortune. Wait, this sounds familiar. That's because this same thing happened in the Bryce 2 video. This time though, I thought it would be funny to include a picture of actress Fortune Feimster at the same time I said fortune. I pretended to be confused about the picture, then understand it a few seconds later. 
I wondered if Fortune Feimster would ever appear on Celebrity Wheel of Fortune because, you know, Fortune. As I typed this explanation, I thought of a before and after puzzle. Wheel of Fortune Feebster. Depth of Emergency. Game. Alright. I first saw her on a show. Depth of focus sounds similar to Dire Space Emergency. The chords are almost identical, but Depth of focus is acoustic and Dire Space Emergency is electronic. Additionally, the tempos are the same at 120 beats per minute. Because of their similarity and possibly my indecisiveness, I played both at the same time. This is one of those long ones. Fortune Teller. I first saw her on a show that I started watching that I discovered in 2020, last year. The first time I saw her was on that show. I'm not sure how many episodes I've seen with her. And then I, and there was another movie I watched with my family and she looked familiar, I don't remember who she was, and then I looked at the cast, and yes, they, I recognized her. I also recognized uh, another actress from, that also was in uh, Capital One. I went a bit too far, but but we'll get there. Do you remember me talking about how back in the spring of 2020, my father took a temporary job as a shelf stalker for Frida Lay, which required early rising, and I spent the nights and days at Nana's house so that I didn't have to rise early? Well, I decided to watch something on TV at Nana's house while I ate lunch. This didn't all happen in one day. I found some recordings of Brain Games, which I hadn't watched for a while. It was completely different. Different set, different format, different host. Keegan-Michael Key instead of Jason Silva. I watched it anyway, and I had no problem with either set, format, or host. One time, I saw a show called 25 Words or Less on TV and thought it was interesting, but I didn't watch it until I watched all the recordings of Brain Games. I watched 25 Words or Less while eating lunch since then until I found their YouTube channel, which includes full episodes. There was one episode of 25 Words or Less where I first saw Fortune Feimster. Back to the Idol of July Season 2 video. The blue text on the screen is about the same color as the logo of 25 words or less. One time, my family watched Yesterday, and did that paramedic actress look familiar? Yes, day. I searched the cast and recognized the name from 25 words or less. There's a lot to this explanation. Editor me thought of another joke. Speaking of another, I accidentally put another space in here. But, uh, yeah. Fortune Feedster plus Teller from the famous magic duo Pen and Teller equals Fortune Teller. I used an image of one of those origami fortune tellers. Fun fact, I am almost done with the explanation because all I need to do is address the fun facts. Both Fortune Feedster and Fun Fact have double initials FF. The first time I ever saw Penn and Teller was in the Fantastic Big Book of Magic Tricks by Joe Fullman, which I have since I was a child. Which I have since I was a I had the book as a child. I might still have it somewhere. I'm not sure. but it... yeah. The next time I saw Penn and Teller somewhere... Not in person. Never in person. I recognized them from the book and was interested in them since then. At least one time, I saw Teller's business partner, 
Pen Gillette on 25 words or less. Am I finished with this explanation now? The first word in the movie that had Fortune Feimster and another actress I recognized is yes. Capital One. I also recognize uh, another actress from that also was in Capital One. Yeah, I'm talking too much about it's fine. Bye. I recognized another actress in Yes Dave from some of those Capital One commercials. I moved my face cam so that I could point to the one in P1 on the screen while I said one in Capital One. The P1 on the screen is a part of CP1, which indicates the first checkpoint. At the same time I moved to my face cam, Edward and me gave a third fun fact, which was that I was talking too much. Was it a coincidence that the previous explanation was also a bit much? The text pointed to me and I pretended to read it. Then I pretended to read the text that said that I was talking about irrelevant and unnecessary things, but I was okay with it. Slider dance! E1 A soft lock is something in the game that prevents further progress, but can be reset. An anti-soft lock provides a challenge to get out of what is otherwise a soft lock. The Super Mario 64 slider music is often used in an anti-soft lock. That is exactly what was happening here. I danced to the slider music for a few seconds. Okay, I, I did not even thing to write this, but I can say it now, I know why the slider music is used, because the slider music is, sounds comedic, and it, you know, it's kind of funny and comedic, seeing somebody, could be Dave, or whoever's playing the, the level two, or the course, to try to get out of the anti-soft lock, and they keep failing because it's so hard, and that's kind of funny, and the slider music adds insult to injury, still the comedic sounding music in the background. Okay, that's better, right? Better for me, at least. Um, that darn mouse. What do we gotta do? <laughs> I thought I already killed that darn mouse. The anti-soft lock was taking a long time, so Chris, the editor, sped it up. It made Dave's voice sound squeaky like a mouse. I paused the video, looked for that mouse, and said, I thought I already killed that darn mouse, as a joke. Let the records show that I do not participate or condone animal cruelty, with the exception of flies, stink bugs, and other similar nasty critters. Like ticks and mosquitoes and... And, like, poisonous spiders, I guess. Which can kill some of those other bugs, but... I don't know. Slider dance again. Yes! No! I can't... I can't... Pull back, dude! Uh, okay, what I was doing here, I thought I was dancing anymore. It's just waving my hands very fast. I danced to the slider music again. Dave said, yes, because he made progress in the anti-soft block. But then I said, no, and laughed because Toad fell down again and Dave had to restart. Evil. This is just evil. Evil! Evil! 
Who came up with this? Hmm? <laughs> Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are retired superheroes in the Nickelodeon. 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 <laughs> it's about time I flubbed reading this. <laughs> Nickelodeon. That's funny. <laughs> Stop <It's not> Nickelodeon. <laughs> Am I tired? Is that why I'm so hyper right now? I mean, you know, you know, a couple of hours ago, for a long, yeah, a couple of hours ago, you know, I ate a big meal, and sometimes I can make you tired, and then sometimes if you're tired, it counterintuitively makes you hyper or something. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are retired superheroes in the Nickelodeon cartoon SpongeBob SquarePants. Mermaid Man's catchphrase is evil. I think Dave was referencing that to describe the anti-soft soft lock. So, editor me included a clip of Mermaid Man saying evil, which sounds like an electronic village, am I right? That clip was uploaded by Leah Stevens. In the recording, I scrolled down to show the channel name. When I edited it, I trimmed it to just Mermaid Man saying evil, and I duplicated the clip and cropped around the name Leah Stevens. Who came up with this? Who came up with this? Hmm? Own up to it. Not me. Not me. Own up to it. Yep. It was not me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what the dog? Yet again, I am talking about the same anti-soft lock. Dave asked who came up with it, and I said, not me. Dave said, it was not me. Mm-hmm. As if he heard me. This really is a coincidence because I don't watch ahead in the trolled episode off camera. Except for an April Fool's video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the dump? What the dump? Legitimately, I do not watch. So if I have a trolled episode, like, uh, I don't trust the troll level for a, for a second. If I use it for I've lost a lot, I don't trust the troll level for a, for a second. If I use it... Dave said that in response to, yet again, and as always, that same anti-soft luck. I had a bingo space for that, but I missed it while recording. Editor me noticed it and pointed it out. I have marked it since then, but it didn't give me a five in a line. Night cannon. I go. I don't trust the troll level for a, for a second. If I use it for I've lost a lie, I do not watch any of it. Or like ahead of time. Bef without recording it. So, I don't know. So this is actually legit. I don't know what happens there yet as of recording. But maybe I will sometime go through and watch all of the I Bought Light Trolled episodes just, you know, straight through without... Well, I mean, they've already appeared on I Bought Light, so doing them again, it wouldn't be on I Bought Light that time. I have re-watched a few of the Trolled episode that I had used in I Bluffed Light before. I don't think I've done all of them yet. Okay. Yeah. The point is, it's a coincidence how say it not me. Well, not hard to believe. Say no, own up to it, and of course, if you didn't do it, you wouldn't say not me, so. And I'm not really reading the chat either, but. I don't know what else to call this, but just duplicating it doesn't make it a cannon. Anyway, I duplicated Night Cave and moved each duplicate forward, I think, by one measure, or four beats. 
Alvin, is that you? Yet again, and as always, we are filtering by clear rate and changing the difficulty to expert because the same anti-soft lock was still taking a long time, so Chris the editor sped it up. It made Dave's voice high-pitched like a chipmunk. I paused the video, looked around, and asked, Alvin, is that you? I was referring to Alvin and the chipmunks, which made a brief appearance in episode 1, part 2 of I Beloved the Lie, season 2. It was the not that Dave uh, shenanigan. Sus. That ellipse is there, the three dots. That's so sus. But I'm not voting this time. I'll vote for the three dots next emergency meeting when I find out more about the dots. Sus is an abbreviation for suspicious, and it was popularized by players of a game called Among Us. Every game has at least one secret killer called the Imposter. In addition to killing, imposters can sabotage the map, which sounds an alarm. An emergency meeting is called when a dead body is found, or somebody presses the red button in the middle of the meeting room, and the alive players can chat with each other and vote to eliminate one player who they think is an imposter. The crew meets when if they complete all their tasks, which is done not during a meeting, or eliminate all the imposters, which is done one at a time per meeting. The imposter or imposters win if they kill too many crewmates or their sabotage goes unfixed for too long. I saw GG on the screen, which means good game, which means the end of the course might be near. Then there were three dots, called an ellipsis, which means the end of the course might not be near. I called it sus, and editor me played Signs to Nowhere, which is a mysterious jazz noir piece of music that is perfect for discussing something sus. I made a reference to Among Us. Since the three dots are sus, I suspect that they might be the imposter, but I don't know enough now, so I'll vote f in the next emergency meeting. Fun fact, I actually played Among Us myself for the first time during the last week or two of that workforce program I mentioned in the I Beloved to Light Episode 6 Jokes and Shenanigans Explained video. Raid Dance Alright, right, my friends, that was not stolen stuff by Mr. CP Zero in collaboration with Major Kid and Geo. Another Twitch streamer, Ollie2507, rated DGR underscore Dave which means Ollie2507 and their 18 viewers. Or does the 18 include Ollie2507 and there were 17 viewers? All came to Dave's stream at the same time. I danced to Dave's raid music along with him. And that is... I am done with season 2... Abeloth Life season 2 Jokes and Shenanigans explained Except for the tower episode, I have the tower episode, but before I do the tower episode, I will do the last episode of season three, not here, but elsewhere. And so, yeah, I'm, that, that's it. I, I'll just edit this and one or two videos. I don't know what Editor Me is going to do. And, I'll, and then, after I get those finished, then maybe I'll start recording for the last episode of season three before I finish, before I upload this, whatever, it doesn't matter, but as far as uploading dates are concerned, this one or two videos, whatever I do, will be before the last episode of season three will go up there, and then when I, after, sometime after season three, 
I'll have to explain the tower episode. Upload that in. And then I'll be I'll be done with I Belong to Life for a while. Well, until I do season three explanations. If you're smart, click the like button. If you're genius, click the subscribe button. Uh, yada yada yada, whatever. I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, you'll see me next time. Ah, uh, you know what? You know what? Heck with it. Have a 71 minute or 72, including after black, I don't know, long video. An hour and 11 or so minutes. Just, just, just do a one video. I'll just get it, just get it done in one video. It, instead of breaking into like half hour videos, just, just, just do it the one hour something long video. Just, just do that. Don't break it into two. Just make, just make it a long hour or something video. Sunset, 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 sunset,